Hey guys, welcome to the first Cubicle 2 beginner tutorial. Today I would like to show you the very basics of Cubicle 2 so that you can modify your first voxel model. Let's start by opening our test model. To have a good look at your model from all sides and all directions, you have to rotate, pan and zoom in and out. And you do this by pressing the Alt key and one of the three mouse buttons. So hold down the Alt key and use the left mouse button to rotate, the middle mouse button to pan and the right mouse button to zoom in and out. You can also use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. In the top right corner of the workspace you can see this cube, it's called the cam cube, and it basically shows you at what direction you're looking at your model, and you can use it to rotate your camera to a perpendicular view of your model. So if I click on front, the camera rotates to the front view. Okay, now let's have a closer look at the TV. So I want the TV to fill the screen space and I do this by zooming in and panning and okay, it's finally in the screen. If I rotate the camera now, I will notice that it's still rotating around the world origin, which lies here. And that's probably unwanted. So to speed up the whole process, I use a technique called framing and to frame, you simply move your mouse over an object and press the F key on your keyboard. So now the TV is centered on the screen and if you rotate now, you can see that it's rotating around the center of that object. Okay, now that you know how to use the camera, we can start to draw. To edit your model, you need tools and you can find those tools on the left side of the user interface. Most of them should be quite familiar if you've used uh, image editors before. So you can use the pencil to draw and the eraser to erase voxels. Or you can use the bucket tool to fill an area of voxels. Some of the tools have alternative modes. For example, the pencil can not only draw freehand, it can also draw a straight line from one point to the other. To do this, you click on one voxel, hold down shift and press the mouse button again and you can see you get a straight line. And the pencil can pick a color from a voxel to do this, you hold down the control key and click on a voxel and you can see that the color has changed. A quicker way to select tools is either to memorize the keyboard shortcuts. A third way to select a tool is to use the tool wheel, which you can open by pressing the right mouse button. Keep the right mouse button down and move your cursor over the tool you want to select and release the mouse button. As soon as you switch a tool, you will notice that this area of the user interface is changing. It's called the Tool Options bar, and it holds optional settings for the tool you've currently selected. For example, if I want to flood fill an area, I can either fill contiguous voxels, like this, or I can deactivate this and all voxels sharing the same color will be filled. Now select the Move tool and the Move tool is used to select objects and to translate them. To select objects you can either click on them or you can hold down the left mouse key and draw a selection rectangle and as soon as you release all objects inside that rectangle will be selected. If you want to add more objects to your selection, you can hold down the shift key and click on an object. 
and if you want to remove an object from your selection you can hold down the control key. Once you've selected an object you can translate it with the move tool or you can apply modifiers. You can find modifiers in the main menu and some of them are also located in the tool options bar. For example, if I have the move tool selected, I have easy access to flip and rotate. Okay, the next thing I would like to show you is the matrix editor. As you can see, the model is divided into a lot of smaller parts and such a part is called a matrix. A matrix is basically a 3D grid filled with voxels and I've shown you how to edit them with the pencil tool but there's a more convenient way to do this, a more powerful way as well. It's uh, called the matrix editor and you can open a matrix in the matrix editor by moving your cursor over an object and press Q on your keyboard. So now the matrix is isolated, all other objects are hidden and I can focus on this part of my model. The matrix editor offers a lot of additional ways to edit a matrix. For example, you can now select voxels either with the select tool or with the magic wand tool. And as soon as you've uh, selected voxels, you can Translate them, of course, with the Move tool and you can apply modifiers, for example, flipping or rotating. And what you will notice as soon as you modified or translated selected voxels, um, the outline of the voxels will turn pink. And this indicates that the voxels are detached and you can translate them without overwriting the other voxels of the matrix. As soon as you start to do something different, for example drawing, the voxels are detached again and the pink outline changes to the color of a selection. One thing you need to know is that voxels can't exist outside of a matrix. So if I move the detached voxels out of the bounding box of the matrix, you will notice that the colors of the voxel change to pink and this indicates that if you attach those voxels now those pink voxels will get lost. So if I start to draw now voxels will get attached and those outside of the matrix are lost. You can prevent this by using safe attach um, shortcut for a safe attach is shift enter and what it does is it resizes the work area of the matrix so that all voxels fit into the matrix after attaching. Another great feature of the matrix editor are the three edit modes. I've used this 3D mode up until now without telling you in 3D mode, all voxels are affected by the tool. So for example, if I use a pencil, I can draw on all voxels. That's the 3D mode. And we have a 2D mode as well. The 2D mode enables you to work on a slice of the matrix. To enable 2D mode, you can either click here in the tool options bar or you can use the tool wheel and as soon as you are in 2D mode you can pick a slice by using the slice selector or the slice scroll bar and you can look inside the model and that white area is your 2D canvas now and if I use the pencil now I can draw on that canvas if I go back to 3D mode, I will see that I've drawn in midair. 
The faster way to pick the slice you want is by using the spacebar. To do this, you move your mouse over a voxel and press space. And now the slice containing the voxel is automatically picked for me. If I press space again, I will go back to the 3D mode. Note that it matters over which face of the voxel your cursor is when you press space. So for example, if I press space now, I will get to this slice. And if I press now, I will get to this slice. Last edit mode I want to show you is the 2D auto mode, which is new in Cubicle 2. And just like in 2D mode, um, 2D auto enables you to work on a slice. But the difference is that the slice is automatically picked for you. And you don't have to leave this 3D view. I want to show you how that works using the pencil. So I switch to, to the auto mode. And as soon as I move my mouse over voxel, you will notice a crosshair which changes orientation depending on the side of the voxel your cursor is over. As soon as I click now, the slice is automatically picked for me. And if I keep the mouse down and draw now, I draw on that slice. It's basically the same as moving a cursor over a voxel, pressing space, now drawing and pressing space again. So that's what the 2D auto mode does. It speeds up the whole process and you don't have to leave uh, the 3D mode. Again, if I press here, that slice is picked for me. You can even use uh, line drawing in 2D auto mode. I've shown you this in 3D mode. If I click on one voxel, hold down shift and click on another voxel, a straight line between those voxels is drawn. And then if I do this in 2D auto, I click on that voxel. And if I press shift now, it only draws a line on that sl particular slice. So it's super easy now to draw a rectangle. Okay, those were the minimum basics you need to know about Cubicle 2. My advice would be to play around with the test model and to get familiar with the tools and edit modes. In the next video I will show you how to create a new 3D model from scratch by using a simple 2D bitmap. Okay, see you then. Have fun with Cubicle 2.